Appreciate it. <clears throat> Thank you for the invitation to be here tonight. Am I too loud? Okay. Um, when Doug asked me if I would give my testimony, um, guess what my first response was? I don't really have one. <laughs> but then after I thought about it for a couple of days, I thought, you know, we all have a testimony. Every, every one of us here have a testimony. Mine is different from yours and yours and yours. They're all, they're all different. But we have a testimony if we have a relationship with, uh, with Jesus Christ. And I'm so grateful for that in my life. Um, I've had a song on my, in my mind for a couple of days, and I'm not going to sing it to you, but I'm going to read the words to you. Um, it's an old song, and if you, if you are an old school Christian like I am, and um, love it, um, the, the song is, Great is Thy Faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness, morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed, thy hands hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. And the last verse of that song says, Pardon for sin and a peace that endureth. Thine own dear presence to cheer and to guide. Strength for today and bright hope for the future. For tomorrow, I'm sorry. Blessings all mine with 10,000 beside. I looked at that last verse and there are so many key words in there that are so po positive for us. Pardon, peace, presence, cheer, strength, blessings, and they just go on and on. Um, Jeremiah wrote in Lamentations uh, chapter 3 in his uh, book of grief and devastation and lamenting <laughs> one of the most powerful and one of the most beautiful scriptures, I believe. And it says, it is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning, saith my soul, therefore will I hope in him. We have great hope uh, in the faithfulness of our Lord. And I think if I had to uh, put a, a, a theme on what I want to say tonight in, in sharing my story, uh, the theme word would be faithfulness. Uh, the faithfulness of God in all that we do. The faithfulness of God in my life um, might have been different or might be different than in yours. You may have become a Christian two years ago. Uh, you may have become a Christian 60 years ago, depending on, on how old you are. Douglas here, how old are you? 92? So he, <laughs> he's been around a long time. <laughs> uh, he told you a little bit about my career. I, I graduated from high school and, and went directly to work for the federal government and uh, worked there for 37 years. I graduated when I was 12. So uh, you, and to answer all of your questions of why I look so young, um, okay, I won't, won't try to be funny anymore. And I worked in uh, Greenville in the Social Security Office in Greenville for 30 years and then transferred to over to Dallas and worked at our training center in downtown Dallas for seven years. And I retired back in 2013. So I've had some uh, wonderful years of retirement with my wife. And uh, when I retired, Judy and I went into full-time uh, business uh, doing estate sales. So we're in the estate sale business. We had done it part-time prior to my retirement, but couldn't do it full-time because I was still working. But uh, we have been very busy uh, for the last, um, well, since 2013 when we went into that business. So uh, it's, it's a wonderful business. We enjoy it. As Doug said, it's, um, it's a, a liquidation. If um, you have parents or siblings, uh, someone you know that's passed away, had to downsize, go into a nursing home, whatever the reason might be, and they need to liquidate their, 
the contents of their home. That's basically what we do. We go in and help families do that. It's, um, it's a job that we enjoy doing, but we also see it in a way as a ministry. Uh, we men we're able to minister to families at very difficult times. We get calls from people and they say, we don't know what to do. What, what do we do? We have no idea. So we're able to step in and, and help them and minister to them, and it's, uh, uh, it, it has been a blessing in our lives. As Doug said also, I was born into a Christian home. One of those things, I'm going to use the word faithful and faithfulness uh, a lot, uh, and thankful uh, that I was born into a Christian home. Um, I was saved, uh, received the Lord as my Savior when I was 12, and uh, baptized. I was filled with the Holy Spirit when I was 14, and so I have been so blessed, so grateful, and so thankful for the Christian life that I have had uh, all of these years. Um, my father passed away when I was 13, and so that was a difficult uh, time uh, for me. I'll have to admit that as, as a teenager at age 13 to lose my dad, it was just my, my mom and I. And uh, she, out of the blue, was a single mom. And uh, I was there, but God was faithful. And he, uh, he provided for us, um, and uh, he, was, he was faithful to us. It was a struggle for her, I know, uh, but I'm so grateful that, uh, that we, we survived it. Um, as I said earlier, I went to work when I was 18, right out of high school, so that, that has been a blessing too. <clears throat> My mother's health uh, kind of deteriorated over the years, and so I, in addition to my work career, I also kind of became a, a, a caregiver uh, to her, and um, I felt that that was a ministry as well for me, um, and God was faithful to me in, in helping me to do that. and. Um, I dated very little during that period of time. Uh, my mother passed away when I was 30. And so because I felt like it was a ministry, I, I didn't date very much. And um, two years after my mother passed away, I met my wonderful wife, Judy. Um, and uh, she lived in Irving and she was introduced to me by um, her singles pastor at the church that she attended in Irving. And so uh, we had a really quick romance. We met in April. We became engaged in August and we got married in October. So uh, I was talking to um, a gentleman at church the other day and he said that he and his wife dated for eight years before they got married. <laughs> and I told him, I said, well, uh, uh, it, and he's still married and, and doing well. I said, well, uh, you did eight years, and I did about six months. So, uh, but uh, but God is good, and uh, have a wonderful wife. She was not able to be here tonight, but uh, she has been a wonderful wife. She's been a wonderful mother to our two sons, and we have one granddaughter, a uh, little four-year-old Adeline that we're very proud of. And so, uh, uh, again, God was faithful to me in providing me with a wonderful wife, wonderful children. Uh, our son is, uh, uh, was born in, uh, our oldest son was born in 91, our youngest son was born in 98, and our little granddaughter is four. So we're very proud of, very proud of them and their, uh, and what they mean to us in our lives. After I retired in 2013, um, I had uh, quite a difficult time because I had, at that time, a brother and a sister that uh, pretty much at the same time both became very ill and neither one was married, neither one had children and so I was thrown again into the, uh, into the caregiver position and um, I, I have to say that God was faithful to me in that as well in helping me to, uh, to uh, manage with them they uh, weren't the easiest to deal with at times, <laughs> and so. Uh, but uh, but God was faithful, and um, I, I was able to minister to them and to help them until they until they passed away.
but that was a that was a big part of uh, my life and Judy's as well. She was right there beside me, helping me and encouraging me along. Um, having said that, I was uh, a uh, uh, born into a Christian home. I uh, have lived in Greenville all of my life, except for two years when I. Uh, took a short stint and worked uh, at our one of our offices in Houston. And I was there for two years and then came back. I'm saying that to say uh, from the time that I became a Christian until just recently, I attended the same church. Uh, I, was a, I was a lifelong member of, of the same church uh, in Greenville. I, in my adult years, became a leader in that church. I was a deacon. I was a Sunday school teacher for 35 years, and um, uh, you know sometimes we say our our church is our life. You know, uh, so many times the people in the churches they become our church. What we refer to as our church family, they're they're part of our family. They're they're part of who we are, and uh, so because of a, a difficult situation in that particular church, Judy and I felt like that it was time for us to make a change. And again, I'm going to use the word faithful. God was faithful to us uh, during that time because, as you can imagine, having attended the same church, I'm 67 years old. I was born <laughs> into that church, so truly lifelong. So you can imagine the impact and the struggle that there would be in in finally deciding that a change needed to be made. And I'm not against change. Uh, change can be good at times. Uh, but we went through a, a very difficult time. Uh, but again, God was faithful to us and, and uh, led us to another church that we're now attending and have uh, just been welcomed with open arms and have uh, been loved and welcomed and uh, so many may have made so many friends. We have, we have a new church family. We still have our old church family. Many, many people that attend there are still, we still love them dearly, uh, but we just felt it was time for us to, to make a change. You may have done the same thing. I'm not gonna ask you to raise your hands, but uh, some of you in here may have had to do the same thing at some point in your life. So it's not a horrible thing um, it just it just happens, but God has been so faithful to us, and we we're, we're so happy now, and uh, so thankful for what uh, what He has done for His His faithfulness. Um, our our faith didn't change, our beliefs didn't change, uh, nothing about that changed. We just changed church locations, <laughs> uh, so to speak, and. Uh, uh, but God, God is still faithful, has been faithful uh, to us uh, through all of that. Um, my life has been fairly ordinary. Uh, as you've heard what I've said to you, um, but I was thinking this afternoon as I was make, writing down some thoughts and I thought um, uh, an ordinary life with God is still spectacular. You may have had a spectacular life. <laughs> you may have uh, had some wonderful experiences in your life. You may have traveled the world. Um, you may have experienced wonderful uh, miracles in your life. Uh, all kinds of things that may have happened to you that might not have happened to me. But that thought again was that uh, an ordinary life with God is spectacular. Um, I'll, I would uh, like to read that verse uh, to you again that I that I read because uh, it, it summarizes uh, my life. It, again, it says, "It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed, because His compassions fail not; they are new every morning," saith my soul. Therefore, will I hope in Him. Our hope is in Jesus. Our hope is in uh, Jesus today and, and his faithfulness to us, his grace. I think so much of his grace, his mercy, the mercies that are new to us every day. Um, you, may had, you may have had to experience his grace today. You may have had his mercies uh, shed upon you today. I don't know what, what you've been through, uh, but God is so good and he is so faithful. Um, I, 
um, was thinking at when I thought that when this thought came to my mind that an ordinary life with God is still spectacular. Um, what makes our life so spectacular is that we have Jesus and that we can share. Um, I say so many times, our, our world is not our church. Uh, we go there to, uh, I, we used to call it a filling station. <laughs> we go to church uh, to receive from the Lord so we can do what? So we can go out and minister and be a lighthouse. Like through this fellowship here, uh, the ministries, the testimonies that people may be able to share because of what God has done through them, uh, to them through this fellowship, other ministries that you might be involved in, uh, your daily life, witnessing, living for the Lord, letting your light shine, uh, being, being the person that Christ wants you to be uh, is so important. And so you may have an ordinary life, but it's a spectacular life because of Jesus. And I'm so grateful uh, for that. Let's pray, please. Heavenly Father, I thank you for your love to us. We thank you for your mercies. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you for your love. Heavenly Father, we thank you for Jesus and for the plan that you set forth. And you said that uh, uh, you sent not your only son, but that you, you sent your only son that we might have life and that our life might be eternal and that our life here and now might be spectacular. And we're so grateful to you. And Heavenly Father, if there's anyone here tonight that has a very special need in their life, whatever it might be, I ask that you would touch them, that you would minister to them, that they would reach out to you and receive all that you have for them, whether it be healing, whether it be salvation, whether it be the need for encouragement, whatever it might be, Heavenly Father, you know each person here, you know each need, and we're so grateful to you that you do. And we believe you and we trust in you and our faith is in you. And we honor you and I thank you tonight for each one here. And I ask that you would bless each soul that's here, that you would help us to be the people that you want us to be and help us to leave this place uh, and witness for you and be the, be the lighthouse that you want us to be for your kingdom. We honor you tonight, Jesus, and we give you praise. We give you so much praise and glory and honor for who you are. And we ask all these things for healing and for uh, salvation and whatever need there may be, we ask that you touch in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Can you tell us about your youth experience here in Commerce? What did you receive uh, at a boys gathering? Or did I throw her? I'm not sure. A boys gathering? Oh, okay. Yes. Um, I was telling Doug we uh, were sharing about our, our lives, and uh, I told him that uh, it was actually here in Commerce at the uh, First Assembly of God Church where I received the Holy Spirit uh, at age 14. And uh, it was at a youth, uh, a monthly youth meeting. And um, so, yeah, it was a, uh, it, uh, that was a, uh, one of the most wonderful experiences, apart from salvation, uh, one of the most wonderful experiences in my life to have received the Holy Spirit. And uh, um, as you all know, the Holy Spirit is such an important part of our lives uh, to does so many things for us, leading us, and guiding us, directing us, uh, giving us wisdom, giving us direction, giving us discernment. Um, as you all know, we're living in a pretty evil world, <laughs> and uh, how important it is for us uh, in this very day uh, that we allow the Holy Spirit to work through us and lead us, and guide us, and, and uh, uh, give us direction. I will give you just a short little story. Our son called us last night, and uh, our granddaughter is four, she'll be five in December, and they picked her up from daycare and well, not actually not daycare. She's in preschool. And the minute she got in the car, she started crying. And my son asked her what was wrong. What, why was she crying? And she said, 
Well, I saw today that a lot of people were killed, and I just wonder if they all went to heaven. He was a little perplexed and, you know, wondering. And what happened was they found out this morning that their teacher showed a video to four-year-old children of the 9-11 um, explosion, uh, uh, terrorist attack. And um, I told my, he was, they were very upset. Um, and I, I don't know what your opinion might be of that. It seems to me that a four-year-old is a little bit young to have been shown that video. Uh, but she was very upset about it. I said all that to say um, our little children, our, our uh, preteens, our teenagers are living in a totally different world from what you and I lived in when we were, when we were young, when we were children. And how important it is for us as, as believers filled with the Spirit to be able to minister to these, to these young people. Uh, our little four-year-old granddaughter might be a little too young to be ministered to in, in different ways, uh, but we need the Holy Spirit so much to, uh, to guide us and direct us uh, as, we, as we deal with people. Um, and so, uh, but yes, thank you for bringing that up. It was uh, the, the uh, infilling of the Holy Spirit was a wonderful experience. And um, I, I hope that you have experienced that and uh, will allow the Lord to work through you. Thanks. Thank you, Don. Mm -hmm.